There's nothing quite like that moment when you're just relaxing and watching your favorite TV show, when suddenly your whole perception of reality is challenged by that rarest of things, the crossover episode. Welcome back to Film Shack. Today, we prepared for you the top 10 worst TV crossovers ever. Number 10. Cosby plus Becker plus Everyone Loves Raymond plus The King of Queens. Monday, after an all-new Cosby, the cast of Everybody Loves Raymond visits the King of Queens. I'm trying to swing! CBS had the good grace to bill this night of crossover episodes as Shameless Crossover Monday, so it's not all bad. They realize that what they're doing is a shallow publicity stunt to get as many viewers in for all the four shows as possible, and they know that that's completely shameless and they put it in the marketing. A sly wink to the audience. The crossover was sort of a slow burn throughout the night, leading up to the grand finale in the episode of Becker. In the night's Cosby episode, Hilton Lucas ended up injuring himself. In the King of Queens episode, Doug Hefferman injured himself. And in the Everybody Loves Raymond episode, Ray Barone, you guessed it, wound up injuring himself. And then, in the final show of the night, Becker, Ted Danson's titular character, a medical doctor, returns to his office to find three people waiting for treatment in his waiting room. Can you guess who these three people are? It doesn't quite add up that Hilton, who lives in New York City, Doug, who lives in Queens, and Ray, who lives in Long Island, would end up in a very small practice run by Becker, who lives in the Bronx. But hey, that's the magic of television for you. Number 9. Supernatural plus Scooby-Doo What just did? Ah! Ah! You're a cartoon! cartoon! Supernatural is a long-running CW series about two brothers who fight against, you guessed it, supernatural threats. Scooby-Doo is an even longer-running animated series about four meddling kids and their dog, who also band together to solve mysteries. While these two shows seem worlds apart, Supernatural uses a magical solution to get this crossover rolling. Dean and Sam are sucked into a cursed TV and end up in an episode of Scooby-Doo. The Scooby-Doo cast don't know they exist in an animated world, and their normal gentle mystery turns sinister, as violent murders begin to take place. Dean and Sam know the murders are supernatural in their nature, but the Scooby gang doesn't believe in ghosts, obviously. Scooby Natural plays with the cartoon logic of the Scooby-Doo world as Dean and Sam try to help solve the mystery, before real-world supernatural violence might do real-world damage to their cartoon favorites. Number 8. Mr. Robot Plus Al ah, I kill me! <laughs> Mr. Robot is a thriller about a young man, Elliot, who is recruited by a secretive hacker organization. Alf was an 80s comedy about a sarcastic alien who lives with a human family. These shows have next to nothing in common. So you can imagine that the crossover was a surprise for viewers. Mr. Robot was a very experimental show, and it used Elliot's loose grip on reality to make the episode work. Master Slave starts out like a sitcom, in its filming style and in the uncomfortable laugh track. Technically taking place inside Elliot's head while he's in the hospital, the episode follows a disturbing family road trip, with Tyrell in the trunk of the car and a guest appearance from Alf. It's totally surreal in style, that actually works for the show making it a surprisingly solid crossover, and one that makes more sense than it seems on paper. Number 7. The Simpsons Plus 24 Uh, I'm Ahmed a duty. Chloe, find out all you can about I Made a Duty. Does anyone there know I Made a Duty? The Simpsons crossover with Fox's 24, entitled 24 Minutes, is another non-canon quasi-official crossover that would be simple parody were it not for the people involved. That said, Fox promoted this as a big deal. It was originally going to be The Simpsons' 400th episode, although technically, as part of an hour-long broadcast, it would end up airing as the 399th, featuring Kiefer Sutherland and Mary Lynn Rajkup, voicing Jack Bauer and Chloe O'Brien respectively. The plot involves an undercover bully sting, which somehow leads to a phone call of Bart's being crossed with the real Jack Bauer. The entire episode is done 24 style including the opening credits, and Lisa running a crack counter-truancy unit consisting of Millhouse, Martin, and Database. As this really winds up being an homage with a small crossover cameo, it ranks pretty low on the overall list of Simpsons crossovers, but the episode isn't actually that bad, especially for a more recent outing. Number 6. 
Batman plus the Green Hornet. Batman can handle this. Let's go. Van Williams' Green Hornet and his sidekick Kato, famously played by Bruce Lee, first appeared on Batman in 1966 in the episode The Spell of Tut as one of the series' celebrity window cameos. The duo only gets to poke their head out of a building and wave. Eventually, in March 1967, they would return for an epic two-part meeting in a piece of the action and Batman satisfaction. As superhero matchups always go, Batman and the Green Hornet butt heads and Robin clashes with Kato before realizing they are on the same side. This being the hit Batman show, Batman and Robin were originally planned to win the clash. Purportedly, martial arts master Bruce Lee would have none of his character losing a fight to Burt Ward, so they tie. Kato lands some kicks with a zam, but the battle ends in a Mexican standoff, a dead heat. The only downside, perhaps, is the caliber of villain, instead of the Riddler or the Joker. The four tackle Colin O'Gum, a stamp fanatic who loves soup. The Green Hornet series lasted only one season. Unlike the camp and bubblegum colors of Batman, Hornet played its crime fighting serious and straight. According to Bruce Lee, the celebrated life of the Golden Dragon, Lee listed that difference in tone as a factor in its failure and humbly took some of the blame himself. Number 5. Power Rangers in Space plus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Right. The 90s had more than its fair share of superpower-themed shows, although some landed better than others. Power Rangers was one of the more popular, and in its sixth series, Power Rangers in Space, we got an unlikely crossover starring everyone's favorite turtles. Yes, although you'll be forgiven for not remembering it existed, there was briefly a live-action turtle series in the late 90s, entitled Ninja Turtles – The Next Mutation, widely regarded as the lowest point in TMNT history. In the episode Shell Shock, the evil astronomer brainwashes the turtles into working for her and tricks the rangers into allowing them aboard their ship. Luckily, an electrical storm reverses the mind control, and the two groups are free to enjoy each other's company in space. Number 4. The Simpsons plus Futurama <laughs> Don't drink my loved ones! Don't! Oh, bite my shiny metal ass! Both of these animated shows were created by Matt Groening and Aaron Fox, so a crossover was perhaps always inevitable. However, that it took until Futurama was off the air is a bit of a surprise. Similar in style, the main oddness in combining the two worlds is that despite The Simpsons playing fast and loose with reality, it does exist in some semblance of a real world. Most of the fantastical reality bending happens during the Halloween episodes. Luckily, the episode leans towards Futurama's sensibilities and ends up balancing the worlds and characters well. The intro features the text gag. A show out of ideas teams up with a show out of episodes, which really does sum up this crossover. Bender must travel to the past to try and kill Homer, who he believes is the cause of a mutant rabbit army attacking the future. The result is an excuse for all our beloved Futurama characters to kick it with the Simpsons cast, and it's enjoyable on that front. Number 3. Teen Titans Go! Plus Powerpuff Girls Thank heavens, the Powerpuff Girls! Who are the odd floating color coordinated children? The Powerpuff Girls! That's right! How did you know? The idea of the Teen Titans and the Powerpuff Girls meeting up is a fun one. It seems like a good time for it, too, since we've seen Batman vs Superman and Captain America Civil War on the big screen. It almost seems like a parody of the big screen beat em ups that usually occur when different heroes meet for the first time. With the teams in question hitting competitive streaks instead of coming to blows before uniting to take down the real villain. Not everyone who is a fan of the old Teen Titans likes Teen Titans Go! And that's understandable. There are some pretty major differences between the art styles and the content, with Go very obviously intended as a series of comedy shorts, while Teen Titans was more of a standard animated series. On the plus side, the Powerpuff Girls wouldn't have fit in with the world of the old Titans, so if not for the change, then this crossover would have never happened. Number 2. Seinfeld plus Mad About You I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, I know, you're, uh, my, uh, biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not that at all. Um, my wife is a big fan. Would you mind one out of it? No, my wife is a big fan. Would you mind if I want an autograph? When Mad About You first went on the air, NBC paired it up as a companion piece to follow the already popular Seinfeld. They were both based on the acts of their star stand-up comedy acts, 
and both were about life in New York. While Seinfeld was about a group of single friends, Mad About You focused on newlyweds, being on right after each other, and with both shows set in the same city, some sort of crossover was maybe inevitable. It happened on Mad About You. Even though Paul and Jamie Bushman were married and living together, it turned out Paul still had the lease on his old apartment, just in case things didn't work out. Jamie was furious. Paul told her he had sublet the apartment to someone else and that it was no big deal. Jamie wasn't buying it, so Paul decided to give up the lease. He went over there to give the lease to the apartment's current resident, who turned out to be Jerry Seinfeld's crazy neighbor Kramer, played by Michael Richards. Paul used to have Kramer's apartment. In the end, Paul asked Kramer, whatever happened to that Jerry guy across the hall who was trying to make it as a comedian? This was a full-blown crossover. It was promoted in ads. Michael Richards was playing Kramer, not someone like Kramer. They mentioned Jerry. Or was it a real crossover? Later on, in the run of Seinfeld, long after it no longer ran side by side with Mad About You, there was a plot where Jerry's friend George hated the show Mad About You and his girlfriend was always making him watch it. How can this be? Simple. It's just a damn TV show. They can do what they want and I need to not take crossover so seriously. But for my money, the shows are part of the same universe. So there. Number 1. Bones plus Family Guy Why are you here at the bank, Booth? Ah! You've got a hot doctor friend. Go to her and make a direct deposit like a man. <sighs> the main thing Bones and Family Guy have in common is that they are both owned by Fox. That's pretty much where the similarities end. One is a live-action hour-long mystery drama. The other is an over-the-top half-hour animated sitcom show. Not the most intuitive crossover choice. However, the critic in the cabinet blends the two worlds in an interesting way. Booth is dealing with the stress of trying to decide whether or not to be a sperm donor for his friend and co-worker Brennan. He also has an undiagnosed brain tumor. And this is all the excuse needed to have Booth hallucinate the British baby from Family Guy, who berates the man in classic Stewie Griffin style. Considering the seriousness of the situation, this was a wild way to reveal such a dramatic point. We would like to invite you to share your opinion with us. Do you agree with our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications bell. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye!